The epistle for the second Sunday after Easter is taken from the first epistle of St. Peter, chapter 2, verses 21 to 25. Beloved, Christ has suffered for us, leaving you an example so that you may follow in his steps, who did no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, did not revile, when he suffered, did not threaten, but yielded himself to him who judged him unjustly, who himself bore our sins in his body upon the tree, so that we, having died to sin, might live to justice. And by his stripes you were healed. For you were as sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. The Holy Gospel. It's a continuation of St. John, chapter 10, verses 11 to 16. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. At that time, Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep, but the hireling, who is not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches and scatters the sheep. But the hireling flees because he is a hireling and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for my sheep. And other sheep I have that are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. These are the words of today's Holy Gospel. The Mass today is for the pose of the soul of the Alex Steiner and the anniversary of his death, I think it was April 29th. Tomorrow begins the month of May. On May 13th, we'll have the Rosary Procession. That's on Saturday, May 13th after the Mass. And this is to commemorate the first appearance of Our Lady in Fatima 100 years ago on that day, May 13th. From then on, it was the 13th of every month. <clears throat> we have First Saturday and First Friday coming up This at the end of this week. Those who have the rosary are from Our Lady of Fatima group. Today is Brian Simpson, Charles Muller tomorrow, Garrett Jarbo on Tuesday, David on Wednesday, Matthew Gelhausen has Thursday, Jacob Oaks on Friday, and Matthew Jarbo on Saturday. And Dr. Beerley said he'll take Patrick Roberts' rosary place on Monday in the Immaculate Conception group for the time being until somebody could volunteer to take over that Monday spot. You've got about one, two, three, four, five weeks to try to make a decision. Keep your bulletin handy because it has the May calendar. More chapel phone books are available in the bookstore if you didn't get yours yet. And today we have our first Holy Communion. Nathan Alexander Fiaschetti, present, you don't have to stand, and Christy Joan Oaks, present. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. <clears throat> well, as we've all noticed, these two children are receiving their first Holy Communion. This is your long-awaited day, isn't it? It's probably the easiest day you've had in your life to get up out of bed. You're probably up before anybody else. So much emotion, so much attention. And because after much prayer and study, you're now ready for your first taste of God. Truly, the moments before Holy Communion for everybody are important. They're exciting. But equally as important, maybe more so, I think, are the few precious moments that you have with our Lord after he comes to you. After every Holy Communion, and not just after your first Holy Communion, you should make the important thanksgiving. Always a thanksgiving. Both are important, but never omit your thanksgiving. Close the eyes of your body in order to open the eyes of the soul, said St. Teresa of Avila, concerning the thanksgiving after Holy Communion. Close the eyes of your body in order to open the eyes of your soul. St. Teresa liked to think of her soul as a large room in which she busied herself with making as beautiful as possible. At Holy Communion, on one occasion, she saw our Lord enter that room and rest there, sitting on a throne of grace. And her first act during her thanksgiving was to throw herself on her knees in spirit before his throne and pray to him, with homage and with love. And then she heard our Lord say to her, Teresa, what do you wish? I am here to load you with graces. Ask whatever you desire, and it shall be granted. Do you know any spiritual gift that you ask of God will be granted to you? Any spiritual gift. Whatever spiritual gift. It may not be given right away, but it will be given infallibly not material things however sometimes we ask for things in material world that won't be that good for us but in the spiritual life everything is good for us and God will always give it when we ask you want to take advantage of that time in Holy Communion and ask as Saint Teresa did there is so much for you to do and to say to our Lord after receiving your sacred host you really don't need a book right away. Your own heart will tell you what to say to him and how to welcome him. In fact, St. John Marie Vianney, the holy cure of ours, who is right there behind me and in front of you, used to say, I don't like it when people begin to read as soon as they come from the Holy Communion rail. Why use the words written by men when God is speaking to you? It's almost as if you're paying attention to something that's less important than God. So I say, with your mouth and your eyes closed and your heart open, make acts of adoration and contrition, petition, as well as thanksgiving. After Holy Communion, it is no longer I who adores alone, but Jesus who adores within me. Is no longer I who love, but Jesus loving along with me. So what a privilege and what happiness it is to be able, by Holy Communion, to give God with and through his divine Son, who is in us, the supreme honor which is due to him. Just imagine, we Catholics have that grace, and every human being could have that grace, to pray to the Holy Trinity with God in adoration, physically present with us. That elevates our prayer infinitely. It's not just a prayer that belongs to this world, but it's a prayer that belongs in heaven. Jesus and I together are adoring God the Father 
and God the Holy Ghost. And there is most perfect love amongst those family members in the most holy trinity. And you have one of those divine persons with you to help you to adore and love them. Surely you don't want to distract yourself from this adoration by looking around or thinking about other things when you finish your holy communion. In the same way that... <clears throat> You adore quietly with your eyes closed. Thank him in this way also. God has given you the greatest gift that he can give you in this life. There is nothing greater than God. You are going to receive God for the first time. What else could he give you that's better? Nothing trumps God. Not until he receives you into heaven and shows you his unveiled face, which we call the beatific vision, can he give you anything greater than he gives you right now? And that's the same with all of us. What return can you give him for this? Give him yourself just as he gives himself to you. Without hesitation and in purity and in holiness. When you open your eyes in the next world, the moment after you die, you're going to see clearly that the state of the soul in eternity depends on one thing only whether it possesses God or not. The souls in hell do not possess God, and they never will possess him. And so without God, they will be eternally miserable. The poor souls in purgatory do not possess God, yet. And their one desire is to get to him, to have him, to be united with him. The souls of the saints in heaven, yes, they do possess God and are perfectly happy. They have all that they want because he is all things good. And in having him, they have everything. And this God, whom every soul in the next life so intensely desires to have, you have now when you go to Holy Communion. He's all yours. So hold on to him fast. Spend time with him while you can. <clears throat> while you are together with Jesus, you will also want to make acts of petition. Ask him for what you need. This is the best time to do that. Don't spend your 15 minutes after communion thinking about what you want to ask for. You should have already done that before Mass. After Holy Communion, that's the time when you want to spend asking. Tell God of your needs and your troubles. Tell him what is the hardest area for you to be good and ask him to help you to solve that problem area, how to become better. Tell him what virtue you want the most. Ask him for faith, for more trust, and above all, for more love of him. His hands are full of gifts and they have all the power to grant you all that your soul and your body needs. He knows what you want and need, but he wants you to ask for it. Ask him especially to bless your family and your religion teacher who helped you to reach the altar today. Ask for yourselves and for the poor souls in purgatory, particularly anyone you know who has died. For the holy souls in purgatory, you can gain a plenary indulgence today on your first holy communion. If you Pray five Our Fathers and five Hail Marys for the intentions of the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Church while you look at love, with love, at the crucifix. So try not to neglect that today. Be sure to give something back to God. We've already talked about giving him adoration and thanks and love, but give him yourself. In a few moments when we repeat our baptismal vows, that's one of the things that you can remember to give back to God. You promised him all of these things. That's what you want to do again. A good reminder. Give him your soul, which has his image and likeness stamped on it from baptism. Give him your memory, your imagination, your understanding, and your will. Give him your heart with all of its affections and your body with all of its five senses so that you can be all his. And last, try to be all his the rest of this day. Don't do or say anything.
that can drive his presence out of your beautiful soul. True, his physical presence will leave you in about 15 minutes after you receive him, but not his grace. He is present with his grace and love constantly, permanently, as long as there is no mortal sin committed. Maintain his love and his grace in your soul all day long by making spiritual communions, turning to him every now and then with some short act of love of God. And the proof of your love is going to be not only in your words, but in how you act the rest of this, your first Holy Communion day. Congratulations to the parents who raised these fine children. At least they're fine right now. And to all of the other family members and relatives. So, Nathan and Christy, why don't you stand? <clears throat> and now we're going to do the renewal of promises made at baptism. You were little babies when you were baptized, when I poured that water. You didn't make these then, but your godparents did for you. But now you're going to make them personally, in front of the Blessed Sacrament. So, Nathan and Christy, do you renounce Satan? And all his works. And all his display. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born and who suffered for us? I believe you believe that. Do you also believe in the Holy Ghost? the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And now I want you to say out loud the Apostles' Creed. Now we'll end by saying the Our Father. can both be seated. We'll have to put the two of you in charge of leading the rosary because you do it in such unison. Everybody is together. It sounds like the angels singing on Christmas night with one voice. We didn't have all of this competition going on like sometimes we do in the rosary, which sounds very ugly. Yours was very beautiful, well trained, well done. At the end of Mass, the two of you will come up and you will be enrolled in the brown scapular of our Blessed Mother, okay? And if everybody else would please wait uh, before leaving so that we don't have any interruption when we are enrolling them in the scapular, I would appreciate it. And now with that being said, let us proceed with Holy Mass and let these children receive their first Holy Communion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. 